Good afternoon, Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion now Sunday, September 8th, 2019. Looking out across the tropics today, after Dorian, not much going on in terms of impacts to land, which is a really good thing because we have certainly had our hands full dealing with Dorian. Uh, we have Gabrielle out here, just a name storm in the open Atlantic, adding to the ace points for the year. That is accumulated cyclone energy. That is the equivalent, eh, at least in one terms, one way of looking at it, of how much a certain team scores. Okay, it's like it's just points. It's the accumulated cyclone energy, and it has to do with the wind speed and all of that. It's like a measure of the energy expended from tropical cyclones as opposed to following them for damage or their size or their pressure or whatever. So there you go. That's that. Gabrielle, not going to be a problem. We do need to watch this system in case it tries to wander over and try to make something of itself near the Bahamas. You never know. And, of course, any uh, adverse weather conditions approaching this part of the Bahamas uh, is unwelcome. So not much you can do about it, but at least we know it's coming. Certainly keep an eye on it as relief efforts continue down there in the wake of Dorian. This system out here, I believe this is Invest Area 94L. It was high, then medium, then high, then now it's kind of medium again. And if we look at all of this on the five-day outlook, you get an idea of where these systems are generally headed. Uh, this feature kind of south of west, and this one north of west. And again, this tracking into the Bahamas, upper-level winds are pretty strong right now across this area, kind of blowing across like this, generally speaking. So not very favorable there, which is great for obvious reasons, but again, heavy rainfall, some stormy conditions, not exactly what is needed in that area. So kind of in this lull right now, in between what we had with Super Hurricane Dorian, that's not a, a real term, I just, you know, 185 miles per hour, what else do you call it? You know, if there was a Category 6, that would be it. But nothing out there like that right now, and we're having this little bit of a lull, and you can see on the satellite loop here from tropical tidbits uh, there's gabrielle and this is the southern part of the remnants here of dorian that moved through atlantic canada yesterday and last night bringing some damage you saw the video of the crane that fell over as well as gusty winds power outages numbering over 300,000 people so this hurricane uh, who had its origins out here from energy and in the intertropical convergent zone as well as a tropical wave that came off Africa, you know, had quite the legacy here. Generally speaking, this is the path that it took, and then it came up, you know, just so close, whatever, and then kind of like that. That's a pretty good approximation of what happened. A little bit more of a westerly component through here, as you know, but wow, you know, what a journey, and it's too bad that it left such a legacy of death and destruction uh, because they are fascinating to watch, uh, even if frightening and they certainly can be to people um, that don't understand you know how they work and they are heat engines and a lot of energy was taken out of the ocean but there's still a lot left I say a lot mostly right in here where it churned up to category five um, and we'll look at that in a moment I'll be able to show you how that transpires that it's not really moving heat in the atmosphere it's taking heat out of the ocean generally speaking uh, it's a very good mechanism to do that but elsewhere, uh, you know, tropical wave here, 94L, more energy trying to gather off the coast of Africa. Uh, there's some energy here in the Pacific. So there's plenty to watch. There's a lot of suspect areas. And the pattern this time of year can become favorable very quickly. So it's not like something will pop up overnight, but we might only have three or four days notice that something develops fairly close to land so we got to watch these systems closely and be ready to act uh, as needed looking at the anomalies and I was alluding to this just a minute ago in the Atlantic this is the track that Dorian has left behind cooling off the Atlantic there but you see it really did nothing in this part of the Atlantic basin these are the anomalies departures from normal and boy look how warm the Atlantic is as a whole this updated on September 5th, so just a few days ago. We'll get another update tomorrow. And at the same time, the equatorial Pacific cooled. We lost that El Nino. And so as we progress through the rest of the month, I mean, it's only September 8th. We still have 
a lot of hurricane season to go, and the modeling is indicating quite favorable conditions setting up for the Atlantic Basin going forward. And coupled with this very warm water in the main development region relative to average, and in fact a very warm Atlantic overall, with the exception of just this one path, uh, this swath where Dorian upwelled the ocean, it's primed. Everything is ready, so please don't let your guard down. And, I mean, who does, right? It's peak of hurricane season. You don't need me to tell you that. Just keep an eye out. It's Things are coming. And look, I mean, here's an, another vantage point of this, the CDAS data. There's just different methodologies. We'll get into this one day. We're going to have, like, this master class thing that I'm going to go through. That's going to probably have to wait till next year because I want to really do a good job with it where we explain everything in detail, and we'll talk about that later. But this is what we call the NOAA NESDIS data. This is the CDAS data. And these are just different ways of assimilating data. The bottom line for you and me and everybody else, look at where we were back in early August with what we call the Nino 3.4 index. And it's just a measure of the anomalies out in the tropical Pacific, and it really fell off. Now the value today is... 0.30, 0.30 Celsius below average. And you flip side that in the Atlantic, wow, look what happened in the Atlantic in the main development region, now getting close to a half a degree Celsius above normal, you know, at 0.41 today. And where are we talking about? We cooled it over here and we have warmed it over here. So this is a big plus, this is a big minus, and it equals pluses and minuses a very favorable pattern more than likely setting up. It's not a guarantee, but it certainly looks like it. You know, it really, really does. And we can look at some of the uh, results of that. Whoops, this popped up. I, I want to show you this real quick before we get over to this tweet from Ben Knoll. In the Pacific, uh, I didn't want to ignore what's happening over there. We do have a typhoon. James Reynolds, James Reynolds is on it. Here's some video from him. Wind gusting in downtown Tokyo. Uh, it's Typhoon Faxi, however you say it, F-A-X-A-I, Faxi, uh, impacting um, Japan. And, you know, it's about a Category 3 type event on the Saffir Simpson scale. Fairly small, but, boy, it's moving right in there into Tokyo Bay. Uh, and, you know, that's a big deal. Uh, it's about the same latitude, almost, as Cape Hatteras in North Carolina for what it's worth, but Tokyo a much bigger area, population-wise, than Cape Hatteras. So looking at the pattern going forward, this is from Ben Knoll, uh, tweeted it this morning, a highly favorable velocity potential pattern for Atlantic hurricanes is forecast to unfold from late September into October. And it's this green that represents this upward motion, very favorable pattern in the atmosphere, the red is sinking motion, so this is air that's going down, this is air that's going up or rising, and there you go. We saw this set up last year, and we had a very active time into October, ending with Michael. I suspect this will last even longer uh, into October. It's a later season getting started, and I mean, it just doesn't get much more favorable than that, i got to be honest with you. And if we look at some of the other signals here, um, let me go back to Ben. Doo -doo -doo. This is something he tweeted earlier, a sneak peek at potential October weather patterns. And his highlights here, active Atlantic tropics, a wet southern U.S. These go hand in hand. Uh, it's, it's far from over. And we really have to stay vigilant because Dorian could be the beginning of a lot of hurricane activity coming up. It's the signals are there. Uh, in my analogies, I always talk about you know sports or whatever, trying to make it easy for people to understand. This is very similar to your favorite team and whatever sport you follow, football, baseball, basketball, whatever, that they are ready and they are they look like they're going to win. It's all the signals are there. The quarterback's good. The the guy in the basketball team is on fire. Whatever, and. But it's not a guarantee. Something can still go wrong, and your team loses. You just never know. Sports and hurricanes, that's, that's how it works. But these are the signals that those of us that track this stuff 
look for. And as, as the signals progress, then you see if something develops to take advantage of that, and it's only a matter of time. All right, uh, real quick, this is a live look. I set this thing up three days ago, uh, and there it is. Look at that car going by. This is the beach, Highway 12, right now, between Hatteras and Frisco, on the Outer Banks. Uh, I set this up in anticipation of storm surge. Now, I did not set it up crooked like this. The horizon was level, but the wind was so strong that it turned the camera, even though it was strapped. Uh, and obviously, I didn't do as good a job strapping it as I should. And I'm going to start ratchet strap practice <laughs> this coming week uh, on the uh, insistence of my partner Brent down in the Virgin Islands. His ratchet strap held on during Michael at Mexico Beach. I need to learn the uh, the Jedi way from Jedi Master Brent. And I will, in all seriousness, so we don't have this happen in the future. But remarkable that this camera is still going for over 72 hours, coming up on over 72 hours. They run for about 75 or so, so it's going to go off soon. But here's what it caught. All right, uh, go back here. This is what the camera caught. This is a time lapse, maybe. And this is uh, the morning, Saturday morning. The eye comes over. Look at the wind change direction. Now that strong wind comes in, turns the camera, blows the Pamlico sound into the land there from the right to the left. Look at that. There's the storm surge that comes in. The water rises several feet. So the hurricane center's forecast was very accurate. And then the hurricane departs, gravity takes over, the water drains away. And so that's what we do. That's, this is a time lapse. You know, it's, of course, we captured it in real time. And um, it's remarkable. The project moving forward, uh, understanding how these systems work by using remote camera technology, a lot of it helped uh, out by our patrons right here on Patreon, supporting us, you know, very much like a nonprofit would be, but, but we don't have the nonprofit rules and regulations um crowdfunding it works and if you're interested in joining up and helping out that's how you do it right there and you can see the fruits of our labor as we do it all right so that's a little bit of a look at the success i'll talk more about what we're going to do with all this data going forward i'm still going through it uh i'm going to be having my statistics guy make some charts and graphs for me hopefully this evening i'll show you that tomorrow and over the days ahead when you go after a hurricane for as long as we were all after Dorian, first of all, you're very tired, like I am. It takes a few days to recover. And there's a whole bunch of video and data to go through and compile everything. And I'll be showing you bits and pieces of it as we progress through the next few days. All right? I didn't even look at the models right now because what's the point? The system, the, the, everything's primed. Now we wait and see if something develops. We can worry about looking at models later we've done enough of that that's gotten enough people in trouble i've seen it on twitter oh boy and um i'm not even going to step into that mess uh sometimes don't look at the models you know what i mean just oh wow we have a long way to go but that's okay that's what you have me here for is to try to uh break it down into easy to understand language and the bottom line is right now nothing threatening land and until that changes nothing to worry about have a great rest of your Sunday. As always, thanks for tuning in to hear what I have to say. I appreciate it. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have more for you tomorrow afternoon.